Imagine a future. Imagine a future where every doctor spends their entire consultation looking at the patient in the eyes instead of looking at the computer. A future where time-consuming administrative tasks for doctors are replaced by one-on-one -on -one moments with patients. A future where AI smoothly runs in the background, allowing for deeper connection. And today marks the first day of this future. At DoctorLib, together, we strive for a purpose of building the healthcare we all dream of. DoctorLib is the best-known health tech brand in Europe. We serve health professionals and patients alike, with AI products in particular. We are announcing the release of a product that embodies our purpose, the release of the consultation assistant. It helps health professionals focus much more on their patients and much less on administrative burdens. The consultation assistant helps healthcare professionals focus more on their patients, spending twice as much time looking at their patient in the eyes instead of looking at the computer, resulting in more qualitative time and less mental load. Starting today, with Dr. Lip supports, doctors are able to use the assistant to take note for them and create a medical-grade summary. I am Dr. Laure Suger, I am a pediatrician. And I'm Arthur Tarpart, I lead AI products at Dr. Lib. Today, you will learn about four things. First, that we do not have a AI model, but a series of them, a combination that works together. Second, I have a practical tip for you when you buy, build AI products. Fourth, so third, sorry, you look at how we do data privacy at Doctolib, and fourth, any AI-related risks, and in our case, patient health risks. We are so proud I cannot resist from showing you a demo of the consultation assistant. The assistant is completely integrated in the clinical and financial software, which doctors use every day, all day long. And because we serve 90 million European users who speak all kinds of languages, I show you a demo in French with English subtitles. Bonjour, monsieur. Bonjour. Bienvenue. Merci. Je vous en prie, installez-vous. Merci. Donc, je suis le docteur Sogé. Je suis ravie de faire votre connaissance. Euh, je voulais vous dire avant tout que j'utilise un logiciel Doctolib d'aide à la prise de notes. Donc, dites-moi ce qui vous amène. Alors, docteur, j'ai euh, un mal au genou gauche. Euh, C'est aussi gonflé à peu près depuis mon trail à Annecy. D'accord. Et vous aviez déjà eu d'autres problèmes de santé particuliers Il y a d'autres choses que je dois savoir Alors, Il y a très longtemps, quand j'étais petit, il y a 25 ans, j'avais la, la maladie de Sever au talon gauche. D'accord. Euh, après, on m'a extrait dans de sagesse euh, en 2000, euh, c'est tout. D'accord. Et dans la famille, il euh, y a des antécédents euh, particuliers euh, Chez votre maman, chez votre papa Non, pas que je sache, non. Rien du tout Ok. Euh, et donc, pour revenir à cette douleur et à ce, plutôt à ce genou euh, gauche gonflé, est-ce que vous avez eu d'autres signes associés, comme de la fièvre, par exemple Alors, il y a un mois, j'ai eu de la fièvre, oui. D'accord. Et c'était lié à autre chose Vous avez une infection sur le corps Des boutons Une éruption euh, Alors, pas à ma connaissance, mais mon épouse me dit qu'il y a peut-être quelque chose de bizarre dans mon dos. Ok, bon, on va regarder ça. Est-ce que vous avez déjà été piqué par des tics Alors, moi, je fais très attention à mes premiers traits, et je pense pas, non. Non. D'accord. Bon, sinon, vous vous sentez en forme, vous n'avez pas perdu de poids Non, je pèse toujours 82 kg pour 1m93. Très bien. Et vous connaissez par hasard votre tension habituelle euh, Normalement, 12-8, oui. D'accord. Bah, écoutez, venez avec moi, on va regarder ça. Ah bah oui, effectivement, il est gonflé ce genou. Il y a du liquide dedans. D'accord. Ça vous fait mal là quand je fais ça Un peu quand même, oui. Un peu D'accord. Est-ce que je peux regarder votre dos Ah bah oui, vous avez une tâche là qui fait à peu près 3 cm. Ok, je vais vous expliquer ce que vous avez. Venez avec moi. 
Du coup, euh, vous avez ce qu'on appelle donc, euh, une maladie de Lyme avec une arthrite de Lyme et cet érythème migrant. Mais on va pouvoir soigner tout ça une fois qu'on aura fait le diagnostic et qu'on sera sûr que c'est ça. D'accord. Et je peux avoir quelque chose pour la douleur Bien sûr, je vais vous faire une prescription dentalgique mm -hmm. euh, pour, euh, afin que vous ayez pas mal. Et puis quand vous aurez les résultats de tous les examens que je vous prescris, vous me les enverrez par la messagerie patient. Et comme ça, moi, je pourrai vous prescrire dans un deuxième temps euh, des antibiotiques pour trois semaines. D'accord, ok. Voilà, donc je vais générer la synthèse de notre consultation. Et puis ensuite, je vais vous donner les ordonnances et puis vous allez, vous allez pouvoir aller faire ces, ces examens complémentaires. Donc il s'agit bien d'une douleur et gonflement du genou gauche, parfait, fièvre il y a un mois. Donc il y a les antécédents, c'était bien l'ostéochondrite juvénile du tarse, extraction des dents de sagesse en 2000, parfait. Eh bien écoutez, c'est tout bon, je valide cette synthèse. Et puis je vous fais vos prescriptions et puis on, on discute par la messagerie patient pour vous dire la suite de la prise en charge, d'accord Et puis je vous dirai si j'ai besoin de vous revoir et, et à quelle fréquence. En attendant, euh, ben vous suivez bien mes instructions mmh. et puis vous n'hésitez pas si vous avez des questions. D'accord. D'accord Merci docteur. Voilà, je vous en prie. Bon courage monsieur. Au revoir. Thank you, Arthur, for being such a good patient. I did my best. Thank you, everyone, for uh, watching this mock uh, consultation. So, as you saw in the video, the, the consultation assistant summarized the consultation for me, transforming the patient words into medical terms, identifying the patient medical history, the patient biometrics, and arranging them at the good place in the files. The synthesis was exhaustive and very accurate. How does it happen behind the scenes? Let me show you a diagram of it. So we don't have one model, but a series of them. I think you can recognize top left two persons that could be myself and Laure. Um, we were in this office, we spoke out loud. Voice is an input of the, of, of the AI. The doctor could have taken medical notes, handwritten notes. They usually don't, and this is all the purpose. Also integrated into it is the patient file. Everybody Laure, used to know about me from my previous consultations. So we go through a series of models. The first one for signal processing, clarifying the audio, combining from different sources. Then automatic, automatic speech recognition, which translates the voice into text. After some cleaning, we get a clean verbatim transcript. And this gets ingested with the two other sources into a pseudonymization algorithm. And this is typically hard for health data because is Alzheimer a disease name or is it a surname, a family name? Then afterwards, we extract the medically important information from it. We summarize it and this gets a medical grade summary. Last step. We code it medically, and coding means classifying, for instance, diseases in an international format. Finally, it comes to the computer of the health professional. She, she or her, he gets a suggestion of notes. They may edit it, suppress them, delete them, and finally validate them, included in my patient file in the consultation notes. That's a lot. So, Beyond all the machinery behind it, I suggest we focus back on the two people up left. Yes, as a pediatrician specialized in rheumatology, I often face complex and emotional situations. I remember one instance when a little patient around six years old came in with significant swelling in his knee. As I was trying to understand the source of his pain, I was also trying to record his medical history, to note his symptom, to keep track of his vital sign, and to reassure him and his parents. At that time, I was feeling really overwhelmed with all the administrative tasks I have to do. The consultation assistant is the solution I have been looking for. Honestly, it's amazing. I use it every day for every single patient. It allows me to be better connected with my patient, to notice patient behaviors, to notice patient, uh, patient signs, everything that helps me to get better intuition and deduction skills. 
using this tool, it's easier for me to build the trust and the empathy that are essential to healing. So as a data person, let me take a step back here. Okay? And this brings me to the one lesson I wanted to share with you, maybe. So it's be obsessed with the user, and in this case, show empathy. Showing empathy in AI means, I think, two things. First, deeply understand the user pain points, how AI can alleviate them. This is quite classic, I think, but more specifically to AI. Second, deeply understand also that AI will completely change the ways of working, the ways of practicing, any habits of your users. And honestly, this was kind of hard for me. AI was all supposed to be all about advanced mathematics, mathematics and hard fact data, but it's not. It's also about emotions. It's about giving more space for human-to-human -human interaction. To do that, we involved law, we involved a, hundreds, a few hundreds of uh, health professionals in a beta test for months and months to exchange together with the data scientists. We collaborated on many things. We had, of course, quantitative feedback data, but more importantly, we pick up the phone multiple times a week to understand how it's going, how life is at the, at the office, what the, what the pains are, what the hopes are, how maybe AI finally can, can help in them, how our product is good, how it could be better. So again, on the phone. Yes, at every stage of the product development, from the user research to the beta testing phase, the Dr. Lieb teams uh, asked her a lot of questions and they consulted us, the medical experts. Um, we tried to give the best expertise, our medical expertise and our user expertise, to build a product, to co-create a product that meets our needs as doctors and that are medically reliable. I love this co-creation. So we talk about empathy. We talk also about algorithm improvements. Sometimes we go deep. We talk about any other topic, such as data privacy. Yes, that I, I think my patients value their data privacy rights. So do I. So Arthur, I have a question for you. How can I be sure that all my patient information remains totally controlled? Well, so for the training of the machine learning, we use data from patients only with the explicit consent to it. And now that the models are trained for inference, we do not store intermediate information like, like the voice audio. Um, the data is encrypted, both at rest and in transit with cutting edge technologies. It's on European servers with health certified clouds, which is a European standard. And of course, the data is used for product improvement and to create the medical records only that you saw earlier on the screen. Yes, the consultation assistant is very powerful. The AI asks me to check for hallucinations or omission before validating. If the AI gets it wrong, I have to correct it. So today we're celebrating, but in the same time, I want to say that Laura and I are very conscious of the potential impact of AI on patient health. So this means we monitor errors, we suppress errors, we do it with algorithm improvements, and we do it also with the user interface and user experience to nudge the practitioner into verifying and validating. And this is how we ensure that AI has the most impact for health practitioners, but also, in fact, patients, I'm, I personally believe. If you too, you want to make AI interfaces maybe Take a step back in the background and, on the contrary, augment the human space. Join innovative companies to drive the change. Thank, Thank you. you.